title that we got for the day is, Are You Mom Enough? Are You Mom Enough? And uh, that's sort of, I borrowed that from Time Magazine, Are You Mom Enough? Uh, it's called Attachment Parenting. You want to know about Attachment Parenting? <laughs> um, Dr. Spark, back in the 60s, came up with the idea that, and how many of you, maybe we didn't, but some, some part of our society went along with Dr. Spark. How many read his books and stuff? His thing was, basically, when a child cr cries in the crib, let him cry. You know, uh, and, and, and he'll, get, he'll get adjusted. Attachment parenting is somewhat different. It is that if a child cries in the crib, you go get him, and then you nurse that child even to the age of four or five. You have to. Uh, or, or the child has to, and some of us have done it already. Our kid is 12 years old, come to get out of bed. Anybody have that? Your child come to get in bed with the parents? I tell you, so you've already done it. Who, who has gotten into bed with their parents at the age of 12? Raise your hand. All right, okay. All right, so let's be honest. Yeah. In your 40s. And this could have been you on the magazine. Could have been you. But uh, are you current enough? That's the idea. Are you current enough? Are you mom enough? The Bible tells us in Isaiah 6, 13, everyone sees that. As, as to the one who is comforted by his mother, so I will comfort you. Now God says he'll be a mother to us, and we know that God is, uh, becomes to us as a mother. Jehovah becomes to us as a mother because El Shaddai, or God Almighty in our transliteration, or El Shaddai, is the uh, Hebrew for uh, God the breasted one. In other words, God is a mother, uh, the breasted one. And so we always say when people pray, Father God, Father God, you can always say Mother God, uh, as long as you don't dis no mean no disrespect, and it would be just as legitimate. As I said this morning, how many of us say Dr. Jesus? And when did he get a PhD? Or him to you. Uh, but we say it with no disrespect because he becomes to us what? Whatever we need. He's your, you can call him brother. Brother Jesus. Who's your oldest brother? Jesus. You know, who's your favorite doctor? Jesus. You know. Uh, and so it's nothing wrong with it, as long as we don't say it with no disrespect. And so God is, does our comfort. So the Bible also says in Proverbs 6 20, I like this one. My son, keep the rule of your father and have in memory the teaching of your mother. So that's something that we do sometimes. Things that our mother does, and we'll come to that later, uh, we, we keep in our memory things that she said to us. And we, some, sometimes we have some favorite sayings. Let your father and your mother be glad. But then it says, let her rejoice. Let her rejoice. And so uh, I'm quite sure I can see Miss Smith over here now. She's flanked by her daughter and her son. I know her heart's rejoicing. They're both sitting beside her in church. So let her rejoice who gave birth to you. Is that sort of right, Miss Smith? You sort of rejoicing? Mm -hmm. All right, okay. And um, who's this? I see Miss uh, Hester over there. And, and, and she's rejoicing. She's got both her daughters and granddaughter. Mm -hmm. So we can rejoice. And that's what the Bible wants us to do. The Bible never states that every woman should be a mother, but we know that every woman can be a mother. The Bible does not uh, say that those whom the Lord blesses to be mothers should take the responsibility, uh, should take the responsibility seriously. Mothers have a unique and crucial role in the lives of their children. Motherhood is not a chore or an unpleasant task. Just as a mother bears a child during pregnancy or through an adoption process. And sometimes we think that you've got to give birth to a child. No, you don't have to the adoption process. Uh, 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 my wife and I always say when we adopted our son, we went through the process. It was just like having a child. When you go into the room and they say you go in to pick up the child, if you want him, 
bring them out. If you don't want to leave them in there. And that was the adoption process. And we brought him back out. I always remind him that. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't leave him in there. So he hooked up. But the adoption process, either way, and just as a mother feeds and cares for a child, whether they are an adolescent, teenagers, young adults, or even adults, with their own children, uh, while the role of motherhood must change and develop, we love uh, the love, the care, the nurture, and encouragement of a mother gives that a mother gives should never cease. And it does not. And no matter whether you, your child is uh, married and gone on about their business, a loving mother's love never Looking ceases. Looking at the idea of are we mom enough? Same scripture I, uh, as the first lady always sort of goes through my uh, sermon and sort of do the editing process sometimes. Sometimes I don't send it to her. You can tell when I don't, everything is messed up. <laughs> but she was telling me that I was using the same scripture that I used last week and the week before. And uh, that was good that she told me that. Because I knew she, she was reading them. <laughs> but uh, we have the scriptures. We study the book of Exodus. If those of you who are coming to Wednesday night Bible study, please come out. We're having a great time with the book of Exodus. But uh, we want to look at Moses' mom, or all the moms in the Bible, and, and, and just sort of see uh, are we good enough? Are we good enough? In Exodus chapter 2, verse 2, it says, The woman conceived and bore a son. That's Moses' mom. The first, we want to say that a, 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 a good mom knows how precious life is. A good mom knows how precious life is. How precious life is. That, that child that's in the womb or that child that's at the adoption agency or that child that's down the street. A good mom knows how precious, or that child in a, uh, a home that, that you care about. The woman could see, talking about Moses' mom, and boy's son, and when she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months with a precious child. And she already had two children, uh, Aaron about three years of age, and Miriam about seven. And, but still, every child is precious no matter how many kids she had. But when she had hid him no longer, she got him a wicker basket, uh, a sort of a, 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 a waterproof basket, and covered it with tar and pit to make sure the water would seep in. And that's how precious she was caring for that child. Even though she knew what she had to do, she was protecting that child. So a good mom uh, may have to do some things they don't want to do, but they, they, they understand the preciousness of a child because they felt that child grow in them or they, they saw that child uh, in the eyes that only a mother can see the child in the eyes of. Then she put, him in the, put the child into it and set it along the, the, uh, among the reeds by the bank of the Nile River. And now Pharaoh has said to the moms and, and to the dads, I want you to, every child that's born, every male child that's born, I want you to cast them in the sea. And he was talking about to drown them. And so she sort of obeyed him to a certain extent. She did cast him in the sea, but not, not for death. She was going to protect him. And so she saw, she, she did this because she realized that every child is precious. Every, and we got to in terms of government agencies too. Sometimes we want to cut this and cut that. And we know that some parents are not always good parents and they sort of neglect their children, unfortunately, or abuse their children, unfortunately, or, 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 or even do some other things in, 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 in our family. We all have families where kids, sometimes parents, are not always loving as they ought to be. But the point is, is that, that, that even though some parents may not do the things they ought to do, we got to take care of the children in our neighborhoods or in our families uh, who may not be getting good parents and we can't be cutting all sorts of social programs uh, to spite the parents because we don't like we don't like what the parents are doing because the children also suffer. 
Another uh, mother that saw some specialists in the child was, was Hannah. Hannah, the, the, the uh, mother of Samuel. And look what she did. For this boy I prayed, and the Lord has given me my petition I asked of him. So she saw that this child was from, from the Lord. And she dedicated him to the Lord. And, and, and she said, as long as he lives, uh, he is dedicated to the Lord. And her greatest moment wasn't so much giving birth, but it was giving her son. And so she realized how special he was that he gave, he, she gave her son to the rest of the world. And sometimes giving up and doing things, we realize how special children are. So a good mom knows, and they can get on your nerves sometimes. Can't be Miss Smith. They can get on your nerves sometimes. Miss <laughs> uh, Cole. Uh, you know, they can. But they're still special. And a good mom knows that. No matter. This is my child. Because she says, like God says, behold, children are what? A gift of the Lord. And we gotta look at them that way. The little baby in the crib, you know, or the teenager who's yelling. Still a gift from the Lord. And we have to look at them that way. And sometimes uh, a good mom knows that. And, and when you do that, you are, mom, you are mom enough. And God tells us, Jesus says, this is how special children are. And Jesus said this about kids, about adults uh, uh, who harm children. He said, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung up around his neck and be thrown into the sea that will harm one of these little kids. So when we see the kids come out back, whether you are, that's your child or not, kids are special to God. He said this, unless you become as a child, you should know, know why enter the kingdom of heaven. And so a good mom knows how special children are. Now there's another scripture here that I think I like too. Because so sometimes when we have Mother's Day, did everyone, every, every mother, get every get a, a, a bookmark. Everybody get a bookmark? Okay. When we have Mother's Day, sometimes we have uh, some ladies who has an adopted child, has a birth child, and they don't feel like th this is their day. And that happens sometimes. You know, I, you know, I'm, this is just not my day. But the Bible speaks that it's still your day, or it can be your day. Look at Psalm 119, verse 2. Do we have anyone here who hasn't birthed a child or who has an adopted child, but you are still a mom, or can be. What the Bible says in Psalm 113, verse 9, he, G, and, and he's letting us know that he settles the burden woman, that is, most of aunts or cousins who don't have children, uh, but God can make her in, in her home as happy as a mother of children. God can take your motherless life and make you as happy as a mother of children because you can be a mother of children. You got that you can you can help out your nieces and your nephews and the church kids and your neighborhood kids. And you're just as mother as anyone else. Because a motherhood is not birth or adopting a child. A mother is in the heart. Yeah. And if it's in your heart to take care of children, you are a mother as far as God's concerned. And so you don't have to have physically or or, 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 or have a child. And so this is your day. And we've got enough kids around here that you can assist in how many uh, neighborhood women have helped out kids in their neighborhoods. And they are just as much as mothers as anyone who may have birthed a child. Uh, because motherhood starts in the heart, not in the other parts of your body. So a good mom knows how precious a life is. That's the number one thing. Knows how precious life is. Secondly, a good mom leaves an imprint that would never fade away. An imprint that never fade away. Sister um, McGuire, where's your mom? She here? Okay. But she left an imprint on you, didn't she? Tell us what that imprint is. When I was young, probably like we didn't have much, but she did what she could with what she had. Um, sometimes she would leave me in the bed, mm -hmm. in the bed and go to work and call me back on the phone and ask me, you know, how are you doing? And uh, I, but I would always tell her to uh, 
I'm busy. I don't watch anything. You know, I was watching TV. And she would tell me to hang up the phone. You know, baby, hang up the phone. She was in bread and water in there for me. Mm. So she left imprint that she did what she can cook with what she had. An imprint of care. Mm-hmm. Imprint of care. Mm-hmm. I know my mom told us two things. Education and God. That's the imprint that we got here. You stay with God, you get education, you'll make it in life. And that sticks in my head. Anyone else? Uh, what your mom? What imprint do your mom leave? Miss Austin, what imprint do your mom leave? You got your son here. Mm-hmm. What imprint do your mom leave? Um, well, she left the imprint of prayer. When we were very small, she taught us how to pray on our knees. Mm. She taught us to bow our head and always respect God. Yeah, imprint of prayer, care and prayer. Yeah, and 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 it's, and, and it's like a tattoo. Anybody got tattoos? <laughs> but it's like a like a tattoo. You 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 you, you just can't get rid of it. I know some of you wish you could, but you can't. <laughs> well, yes, you can now. But you don't want to have to pay for it. <laughs> but anyway, anyone else? Imprint. Yes, uh, Miss Cox. Imprint. Your mom left. Always made a statement. Treat everybody right, no matter what. And that those are things that just don't fade away. Anyone else? Imprint. Brother. Uh, my mom uh, always cares about everybody else's child, like all our friends. Her mom and right. Her Neighborhood children. Yeah, and that's what we need more of that. You know, what's the idea? Sometimes parents, not just mom, parents, my kids, and I ain't worried about nobody else's kids. But that's not the way the world should be. Jesus is El Shaddai, He's God to all children. Someone else? Brother Johnson, your mom left an imprint. My mother, uh, to me, was very special. She taught me a lot of good values. Mm. Uh, as far as paying the bills one time. Uh, always pray and uh, treat the elderly. You know, treat the elderly. Yeah. yeah. Most parents do that, don't they? Treat the elderly. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, uh, Miss Devita. My mom, um, she had the gift of unconditional love. Like even up to the day she died, with my kids literally in her arms, she was in pain, and she always did that. No matter what she was feeling, she would always like go the extra mile. If she had a thousand dollars in her account. My laptop, if I pay hundreds, she would get my laptop. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. Like, physically, if she was in pain, literally, like I said, when she died, she was in pain, and my kids were in her arms while she was watching while I was in school. So she always taught me to love unconditionally, and I just had to have to take care of my system no matter how many times she wrecked my car. <laughs> 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 my insurance premium goes up premium goes up $700, but I'm just saying. <laughs> By the way, that was a great prayer you did this morning, yes. too. Yes. But, uh, the imprint that, that, and I'm quite sure, so whose mom uh, still, what, what's your mom leaving you now? Your mom is still here. Put God first. Put God first. Give her a hand. <laughs> Respect. Amen. Give her a hand. So, so a good mom leaves an imprint that will never fade away. And this is what happened with Pharaoh, I mean, with uh, Moses' mom. Let's look at it in Acts chapter 7, verse 21. Pharaoh's daughter took him away and nurtured him as her own son. Of course, Moses' mother gave Moses up because she wanted to save his life. And Pharaoh's daughter took him. And Pharaoh's daughter raised him her own son. The Bible goes on to say, Moses was educated in all the learning of Egypt, and he was a man of power in, in words and deeds. Now, all this happened, uh, but Moses' mom, when the time that she was taking care of him, she left an imprint so that when he was approaching 40 years of age, the Bible says, it entered his mind, the imprint. And he's that, that what? That you are a Jew and that you are, can be the one to help your people. And we are here, but we have a promised land. And so she left that imprint. And when he became 40 years of age, it became a reality to him. He said, no, I'm not an Egyptian. I'm a Hebrew. And so you are, when you're going through something and you are the doormat, and your mom didn't raise you as a doormat, or you think you're the tail and your mom didn't raise you as a tail, you realize, hey, my mom told me I was the head. That imprint. And that I shouldn't be walked on. I should be walking. You know, and, and, and that I shouldn't be living like this. I had a friend of mine who was on uh, uh, 
came to Vietnam and was on drugs back in the 70s, uh, late 70s, early, late 60s, early 70s. And he lived in New York uh, for a while, but he was from North Carolina. He didn't come to Bedville because he said he was hooked on drugs, heroin, and, and his, his mom never raised him that way. And through just thinking about what his mom had told him about life, he was able to kick the heroin addiction. Not therapy, not going to counseling, but just thinking about what his mom told him. And he said, I fought it for years, but I kicked it. Because the imprint. And so your mom had told you uh, to respect people, to pray, to, to uh, give, to become educated. And when things get tight and things go wrong, call back on that imprint. Sometimes I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when somebody tells me something, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when I feel bad and I fall on my face, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Because positionally, God sees me as holy. 